Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Bitwarden Brilliant session. I'm your host, Tony Coughlin, a part of the integration team here at Bitwarden. And for today's session, we're going to be talking about SSO and Directory Connector. So without further ado, let's get into it. For today's agenda, we're going to be going over a brief overview of Bitwarden, an overview of SSO, some SSO workflows and how to configure SSO. Then we're going to touch on Directory Connector and how to provision and deprovision users and group associations with our Directory Connector application. So an overview of Bitwarden, as you probably know, we are a zero knowledge company and we are end to end encrypted. Quite easy to use software. We're completely transparent and you can vet our code on our GitHub page. We have very flexible deployment options such as self hosting. We're synchronized across all of your devices, easily shareable. We're customer and community centric and we're available wherever you are on any device and with our offline capabilities. So SSO is a flexible solution that can fit your enterprise's needs. We support SAML 2.0 and OpenID Connect, also known as OIDC. With your enterprise policy, you can enforce that all of your users use SSO for sign-on. Owners and admins are, of course, excluded. And you can even provision new users with just-in-time provisioning, which allows your end users to onboard via SSO. And you might ask, well, how does this add security? With Bitwarden, we take a different approach to SSO, whereas you can see by this graphic here, you're still required to use your master password because that decrypts your vault. But before you get to that stage, you'll enter in your organization identifier, complete a handshake with your IDP to prove who you say you are, from which point you're allowed to enter your master password to decrypt your vault session. So you can follow one of our SAML or OpenID Connect implementation guides. For our purpose today, we will be using the Jump Cloud SAML guide, and you can feel free to follow along with this. And then once we get this configured, we will be testing this login experience. And of course, you can educate your team on how to leverage this function. And as you can see here, here are some of the guides that we do have already. If your IDP is not on this guide and you're having trouble getting this configured, feel free to reach out to our team and we'll be more than happy to help you get SSO configured for your preference of SAML or OpenID Connect. Directory Connector. It's an application that lets you sync users and groups to your organization from a multitude of directory services, such as Active Directory, any LDAP-based directory, Azure Active Directory, Okta, OneLogin, or G Suite. So without further ado, let's get started with our SSO configuration. First things first, we're going to sign into our web vault and get into our Jump Cloud Administrator portal. So from the web vault, we're going to go to organizations, head on over to that management tab and go to single sign on. And we're going to allow single sign on and select SAML 2.0. Now let's go on over to our jump cloud integration and we're going to add an application and we're just going to search in here for Bitwarden. We have that here, so we'll go ahead and configure it. And we're just going to call this Bitwarden Brilliance Test. And once we have that, we're going to go ahead and activate this. We'll go ahead and continue through that. It's going to ask us to download a certificate and we'll want to grab that for use later. So we can go ahead and open this up and come to our SSO configuration. And we're going to need to change a couple of the values on this front and in our Bitwarden configuration. So on the Jump Cloud side, let's get this configured first. You'll notice we need the SP Entity ID. This is going to be the same for any Jump Cloud integration. Your ACS URL, this is one we're going to have to change because it wants that org ID. So we'll go ahead and copy this ACS URL from our single sign-on uh, page on the Bitwarden integration. Now that we have that, we will need the IDP URL. 
uh, excuse me, apologies. I mean the IDP entity ID. We're going to give this a name and we're just going to call this Bitwarden Brilliance as well for our purpose. Of course, feel free to name this along with your own naming conventions. So now that we have that configured, we're actually going to need to copy that IDP URL and we're going to bring this value over into our web vault. Uh, sorry, our SSO configuration on the Bitwarden side, and that's going to be our single sign-on service URL. We're also going to need to grab that identity ID, entity ID that we had uh, propagated earlier, and we'll enter that here. Watch out for white space. We want to make sure that we don't have any white spaces. This X509 certificate is not the right one for this integration, so we're going to go ahead and input the new one. And we want everything in between this begin and end certificate tag. So we'll go ahead and copy that in. And now we're just going to have to go over some of these values here. So note, I'm not checking expect assigned assertions, but I have my signing behavior to be configured for. If the IDP wants the request signed, we're using SHA-256. We're going to change this name ID format to email. So Everything looks good here, so we'll go ahead and save that configuration. Same with the jump cloud side, we'll go ahead and save that configuration. So now we can come back to the landing page for the vault, just click that shield and we can link SSO. So we'll go ahead and link SSO. It's going to uh, ask me to sign in to my jump cloud admin account. Oops. And it looks like we did forget to come in here to the Bitwarden SSO group and make sure that we have the user groups applied. So now that we saved that, we can go back over to our web vault, sign back in, link SSO, and this is going to complete as expected. We're then reprompted to enter that master password because we completed that IDP handshake. And now we've completed sign on with SSO. Any of your organization members can just go ahead and now capture this identifier. This is a unique value that you need to grab. It's the last thing a part of this configuration. So you would just come over here to your settings page, input an identifier, anything you want and click save. And once you have that value, your users would be able to come to this enterprise single sign on button, enter in this identifier, click login. If they don't already have an account associated with their IDP, they'll be prompted to create an account. And if they do, as you can see here, this is just the rest of that logon workflow. So that's SSO in a nutshell. You can see it's pretty straightforward. Took us about eight minutes to get that configuration set up. So the next thing we're gonna do is check out Directory Connector for onboarding new users. You can see here I have two users in this organization currently. Directory Connector, it's an application we have that lets you onboard users and group associations. And to use this tool, we're gonna need our API key. For security purposes, I'm not going to show this publicly, but you would just go ahead and grab that API key. It'll prompt you for your master password, and you'll be presented with a client ID and a client secret, which you'll use to log into the Directory Connector application. So I've already done that on our application here. I pulled that up, and for our purposes today, we're going to be syncing with an Azure Active Directory instance. So. We select our directory type. We tell it that we want the AD public authority. You would use the governmental one, of course, if that applies to you. Give it your tenant, the app ID and secret key. Then you can specify a sync interval. So every five minutes this will sync. I can remove disabled users upon the sync, overwrite existing organization users based on the current sync settings. I don't want to overwrite the existing users, so we'll leave that unchecked. I don't have more than 2,000 users I'm expecting to sync, so we'll leave that unchecked. Now, if you apply the sync users filter and just leave this filter blank, what that's going to do 
if you apply the sync groups filter in conjunction with that, is that's going to onboard not only this group as a group within Bitwarden, but also all of the users a part of that group. So if we come to our dashboard and do a test now, we'll see our results shortly. And you can see here, I would be expecting two users to be a part of this one group if I was to kick this sync off. And just for a little bit of vocabulary, sync now is a one-time sync. Start sync is going to be going on that five-minute interval that we had configured. And of course, we also have this as a CLI application. So you can create a cron job or a scheduled task to run this recursively in the background. For our purpose, we're just going to kick off a sync now for a one-time sync. And you can see I synced one group and two users. So now if we go back to the vault, come into this management pane, we have two, two more users here in the invited status following our workflow. So these users get invited, they will accept the invitation in their inbox, and then they're in this accepted status. And as an admin or owner, I have to come in here and manually confirm them before they're onboarded to the organization. Of course, if you have a large onboarding you're working through, reach out to our team and we're more than happy to provide you with a script that can automatically confirm these users once they are in the accepted status. As far as our groups go, we can see we now have this Bitwarden Brilliance group propagated. We see it has an external ID, and that external ID matches up with that one that we have in our source instance. AB4F is the last four there, AB4F is the last four here. And if I check the users pane, once these two users are complete their onboarding, they will be applied to this group. So now I can use Bitwarden to easily onboard users and group associations to provision their collection access. If you have any questions on any of the content presented in this presentation, feel free to reach out and we're always happy to help out via email or schedule an integration session. Thank you for tuning in and Again, this was Tony Coughlin on the Bitwarden integration team. I hope you have enjoyed this and have a pleasant rest of your day.